Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. So let's talk about the double slit experiment. This is an extremely important experiment that was first performed by Thomas Young in 1803. And it was the first experiment that gave conclusive evidence that light behaves as a wave. And it started really eroding all of Newton's ideas about light behaving as a particle, which then changed later on anyway. But for right now, we're looking at light as a wave. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a screen here and we're going to poke two holes in this obstacle. We're going to send light through it. And then we've got a screen, a distance capital D away. And we want to look at the pattern that we get. And what we end up seeing is something that looks like this. So we have a central maximum where it's very bright. Then we've got dark spot, no light at all. Then another maximum, dark spot, maximum, dark spot, maximum. And this was not at all expected if there were just particles going through, because how are you going to get a dark spot? So the way that we understand it is by using Huygens' theory of wave interference. So when you look, you've got some light that's going to come from here and going to go over and meet at the screen here and some light that's coming from the top slit, and it'll come up and hit the screen here. Now, these two bits of light are going to interfere with one another. So the question is, why are they different? Well, here's the idea. The light from the bottom slit has to travel a little bit further than the light from the top slit to get over to this point. If that difference in distance is exactly one wavelength, then that means that we'll have constructive interference because it'll just go an additional wavelength and then they'll both meet and they'll do the same thing. But if that additional distance is exactly one half of a wavelength, then this one will go like that and then be overlapping with the next one and they'll just cancel out exactly. And that's what gives us the dark spots. All right, now we can determine this approximately, uh, th this difference in distance, by drawing the following triangle right here. So we draw that down and we say the red and the green line are about the same distance. And then we've got this little bit of excess from the bottom slit. So if we blow up this triangle, what we see is that this delta R, this difference in distance, is just equal to d times the sine of theta. All right, now what's d? d is the distance between the two slits, lowercase d. What's theta? Theta is the angle that I need to go at to get to this distance y at my screen. All right, so d sine theta equals an integral number of wavelengths. So that's n equals one, n equals two, n equals three, four, five, not n equals 2.7, okay? So an integral number of wavelengths, then I get constructive interference, and that's what gives me one of these bright bands. If d sine theta is n wavelengths plus a half wavelength, now I've got destructive interference, and that's gonna give me a dark spot. So if we plot the intensity that we see as a function of angle, we'll get bright spot, dark spot, bright, dark, bright, dark, and it'll just go on like that, basically uniformly, until the angles get too big, all right? When the angles are small, it really is the same size and just goes on. All right, so let's go ahead and do some problems with this. It's not difficult to do, but it takes a little bit of work. All right, so the first thing I want to say is if the wavelength is much, much smaller than this distance D between the two slits, which is almost always the case, especially with light experiments, because the wavelength of visible light is really small, then theta is going to be extremely small. And so then we can use this wonderful approximation and say that the sine of theta is approximately y divided by the distance to the screen d. All right? So then that allows us to write y is approximately an integer multiple of the wavelength divided by the distance between the two slits 
times the distance to the screen. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this example. We've got two slits, they're 0.1 millimeters apart, so that's lowercase d. All right, determine the distance from the central maximum to the next maximum. So that means I'm looking for bright spots. So that means I need n to be an integer, right? So we're gonna take n equals one. Um, if the light has wavelength 530 nanometers and the screen is two meters away. So this is my lambda, this is my big distance, and the word next here says n equals one. All right, so that's the idea. So all we need to do is determine y. So y equals approximately, we've got one, and then it's 530 nanometers divided by, now this distance d is 0 0.1 millimeters. Oh, but I've got nanometers up here. So let's try to fix that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna express this first in terms of meters, and then we'll express it in terms of nanometers. So this is 0.1 millimeters, so it's 10 to the minus four meters. So that's 10 to the minus four, 10 to the nine nanometers. So it's 10 to the nine minus four is five nanometers. All right, so that's lambda over D and then we got times two meters. And if you go through this analysis, what you'll find is that it's 1.06 centimeters to the central max or to the uh, next maximum from the central maximum. All right, what if we're looking to the first dark spot? Well, the first dark spot appears when d sine theta is equal to half of the wavelength because now we'll be destructively interfering. All right, so if I just cut the wavelength in half, that'll give me the answer. So all I have to do is divide this by two. So this answer will be 0 0.53 centimeters. All right, let's do the next one. This is actually what the double slit experiment is used for now to measure wavelengths. So now we're, we're given the distance between bright bands. We're using some sort of laser and we can see the distance between the bright bands and we measure it as 0 0.7 centimeters. So this is Y, all right? So D, it, it gives us D, it gives us capital D too. And now we wanna know the wavelength lambda. All right, we're gonna use again n equals one because we're looking at bright bands that are right next to each other. So that means that we went from one of them to the next, n equals one. All right, so we'll say uh, lambda is equal to d times y over capital D. Just like that. Again, I wanna do everything in SI units, all right? So I'll change this 0.7 centimeters to seven times 10 to the minus three, that's y. I'll change this 0.2 millimeters to two times 10 to the minus four, so that's my d, and then I'll divide by capital D, which is three, and this will be in meters. And if you do that math, you'll end up finding that it's 467 nanometers. So it's going to be a little bit of like a bluish green aquamarine color, all right? more blue. Um, but anyway, so this actually allows us to measure the wavelength. I mean, this is a really short distance. You can't even see that really, but I can measure that wavelength by using much, much larger distances, 0.7 centimeters and 0.2 millimeters using this idea of wave interference. And that's the double slit experiment. And by two, I can't do this with you two laughing back there. <laughs> So if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> that should be... Less than. Yeah. yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be bleh, starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two... Um, to fix. Yeah. <laughs>